Hey guys, welcome to Rents to Drive. This is another Enjora Buggy Edition, and I made some mods because it is too stinking cold outside to drive this thing. So we're wrenching. If you can't drive, wrench, right? Wrenching's fun anyway, so you know. Here we are. All right, so I'm going to start at the front because that's where most of the action's uh, taking place. As you can see, these are not shiny aluminum axles anymore, or shiny metal axles. I don't know if they're aluminum or not, but we've replaced the axles with Red Cat XR247 axles. So these are roughly on par with uh, with Wraith axles. Your typical your typical Chinese metal Wraith axles are going to be very very similar. Uh, this this uh, car is a little bit wider than it would be just with these axles because I am running 12 millimeter wideners in there. I don't know, I probably can't see them very well, but anyways, because this bad boy here, I'm having a brain cramp. It's not uh, it's not camber because that's the angle of the tire. This is the uh, the angle of the kingpin guys. Notice how the XR247 axles have a serious angle going on on the kingpin there. That gives you good cornering performance, but the problem is, as you can see, it means that your tire has to be farther out, or you gotta have a great big, uh, a great big wheel, which I do not have uh, for these bad boys. All right, so wideners. So this thing is overall about an inch wider than it would be normally. All right, so this is. 310 millimeters it would be about 290 without those wideners guys all right so we got the XR 247 axles they make it very wide we got a uh, axle mounted servo mount 3d printed designed up by me that'll be on Thingiverse soon uh, I'll put a link below uh, works really well this is a prototype version the racket in the background is the uh, the final version printing out it, it seems pretty solid. So far, the only thing where there's a little bit of, uh, I'm trying to see if I can show you. Uh, there's a little bit of flex because the screw that holds the uh, the fourth link on the front here is, uh, it goes into one side of this mount, and then the other side of the mount, the screw from the link that the, actual a the axle actually is intended to run, you put in a longer screw and it helps to hold this in place. And then there's one screw that goes down through the uh, through the middle into the axle, and that's uh, that goes into a standard hole in the axle that is uh, used to, to hold the uh, the cross member on. And I used a couple of posts that came with those uh, metal axles, but I'll include some plastic posts for mounting the servo. And this is a DIY link because I didn't have one that fit perfectly. And that's about it. I think some parts did come with the axle. I do not remember, and I couldn't find them. So this is uh, this is just some uh, some stuff I had kicking around. All right. So the XR247 axles have made it much much wider. Biggest downside, guys. These axles are not really intended for a crawler. They're more for a go fast uh, rock racer desert buggy type uh, situation. So it does not corner super well. It does not turn. The turning radius is uh, is mediocre at best. Now there's two reasons for that, guys. Number one, the axles aren't really intended for that. Number two, the wide is a problem, guys, because these are fully locked up axles. They run a solid spool, and if you know anything about uh, about how cars work, guys, when you're turning, the outside wheel has to go farther than the inside wheel so it needs to turn faster the inside wheel doesn't go as far when the axles locked up they're both trying to go the same speed that means that the outside wheel is being dragged along the inside wheel is kind of gr yeah, gripping grinding and the result is you don't corner as well as you would like to now with these axles you have two problems you have that plus you have the axle itself isn't really designed with uh, with crawling cornering in mind guys it's designed with uh, with high speed cornering in mind so not ideal for crawling but kind of gets across the uh, the idea of what you would get with some wraith type axles guys so I figured I'd put this together and, and just get it up and running and see how it uh, how it performs and one of these days we'll actually see it outside I put these shocks on because those uh, those cheap Chinese metal ones 
They're a little lackluster. These ones aren't a whole lot better. They are a little softer, so I think it articulates a little better. It seems like, not not in terms of overall range, but it's a little smoother. It seems it seems like it's uh, it's a little happier. So for crawling performance, that's going to work fairly well. All right. So the Lynx surprisingly did indeed work. Um, and all I had to do was, okay. So on the front, I shortened the bottom link and I left the top link standard. On the back. I shortened the bottom link, no spacers, and I lengthened the top link with two extra spacers and some extra space in between them. Now, one of the things you have to do if you want to do that, guys, is uh, is change the grub screws, or at least it's a good idea in my opinion. So this little short grub screw here, okay, not super short, but this short grub screw, that's what comes in those uh, in those links, guys. And then I had these longer grub screws that give you a little bit more. It's about two spacers worth more, worth of uh, worth of meat there, guys. So it lets you lengthen those uh, those links without weakening them. So I would recommend getting some of those. You can find those on eBay if you do a little shopping around. They're just scrub screws. I believe the ones I bought are 25 millimeter. Let's just double check that. And I want to say these are the longest ones I could find when I was looking around. Uh, no, they're 20 millimeter. That's a surprise. Okay, so maybe they're. I for some reason, I want to say there were 25. Maybe I didn't order the right ones. Maybe the wrong ones came. Maybe I didn't check that carefully. Anyway, scrub screws, very useful. I'm also running this uh, 3D printed transmission mount. The reason for that is it's kind of hard to see, guys, but that is a 550 motor, and you cannot run a 550 motor with the stock transmission mount because this, uh, this mount here, this, uh, this link mount, gets in the way. So what this does is it has moved up the transmission slightly. It sits up just a hair higher and you can run a 550 motor. I will post a link to this as well in case that is useful to you. Another small mod I made to the, to the, to the chassis is I cut slots where the link screws go. So that you can undo these two screws, two on each side, so four in total. Loosen the link screws and then you can lift the roll cage off of the chassis it makes it easier to work on guys if you're going to work on your car lots might not be a bad idea probably weakens it slightly i kind of don't think it weakens it that much it's up to you obviously follow my advice at your own risk it definitely makes it easier to work on you only have to undo four screws loosen up four undo the shocks potentially depending on what you want what you're doing and then uh and you got full access so pretty easy pretty easy the, the big downside is if you uh, if you have to take these screws all the way out, the links fall out. It's just a bit more of a pain in the butt to put it back together. Uh, okay, we have a different drive shaft in the back because I needed, I think, a longer one if I recall correctly. Yeah, I think this is longer. It's one of these crappy ones on the front. I suspect this is not going to last very long. And I think, I think that is all. Oh, I swapped the transmission, guys. I'm running a uh, just the same transmission, but uh, I left the other one assembled with the belt drive setup on it, and the uh, drive shafts attached, so it's easy to put back in. And this is a 540 motor. Can't remember how many turns. I think 21. The one that's in there, gear setup. I believe I'm running a 14 tooth pinion and metal gears in the transmission the other one is plastic gears in the transmission so this should be a little more durable the 550 gives it a little more a little more torque so when you're crawling uh, with these axles and these big tires hopefully it's a little smoother was was uh, my thinking so that's what we're trying out and and that is it so stay tuned there will be some running video down the road sometime guys uh check out the links below to the parts on thingiverse if you find them useful if you don't have xr 247 axles that uh that uh, servo mount is probably not of any use to you the uh, suspension mount or the, sorry the transmission mount uh that that will let you run a 550 motor so that's probably of some use I'm going to include a spacer so that you can uh, adjust the height of the transmission because it seemed ever so slightly tight in here and I didn't uh, I didn't fully check it before I put it in and I kind of noticed after the fact so anyways it should be fine you might need a couple of different screws 
Nope, I think that's it, guys. All right, so thanks for tuning in. That's uh, this edition of Wrench to Drive, part four in the evolution of this little bouncer, guys. This is probably going to stay this way for a little while now. Uh, the only thing I'll probably do is put on uh, big monster truck tires that are kind of paddle style for running outside because at some point here when the, uh, when the cold goes away, I'll be able to run outdoors hopefully and uh, do a little bit of bombing around with this thing and see how it performs. And uh, that is it. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Wrench to Drive where we ask the eternal question, do you drive to wrench or do you wrench to drive?